Will we soon run out of fish? At the rate we're going, we just might. When we look at the South China Sea environmental-wise, I think we have to all be extremely concerned about our fish stock. Fish stocks are depleting by 70 to 95% since the 1950s. But then catch rates are also declining. We've been struggling to catch fish because there just aren't as many fish out there anymore. Let's zoom out. Surrounding Malaysia is the South China Sea. It also surrounds these many countries. It is perhaps the world's most contested maritime space. In Malaysia, the maritime economy makes up one-fifth of our country's GDP. For marine life, it's one of the world's most productive fishing zones. And it's one of the richest biodiverse regions in the world. In 2015, South China Sea accounts for 12% of global fish catch. From food to jobs, it's a lifeline for billions of people. But all of this comes with detrimental effects to our environment. To get into it, we must first be familiar with this term, IUU fishing, which stands for illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. This includes overfishing, bycatching, and fish bombing. Overfishing happens when the state relies heavily on marine life. Overfishing is when we catch too much fish faster than they can reproduce. So we catch all the baby fish that we don't need. Bycatch or unwanted catch are fish or other marine life that is caught unintentionally with the intended fish. And just by walking through the local fish market here at Kota Kinabalu, the products of overfishing and bycatch are all laid out in front of you. So what are these actually? So this is a uh, blue spotted mass ray. Okay. And this is the scallop hammer head shark. Oh. So this is a brown banded bamboo shark. So all of them are still legal to sell in Malaysia. It's not in the protected list. How do these even end up here though? Most of them, I think they are caught by the trawlers. But then they are not targeted, they just end up accidentally in the trawl net. There are only 10 species of sharks and rays protected in Malaysia. From what we see in the market just now, like Scala Hammer Head Shark and Bottlenose Wedge Reefs, they are still not protected in Malaysia yet. So the setting is when, when we scan through the images taken by the cameras on the trawlers, we see a very rare species, for example, giant guitar fish where we can't really see it underwater. It's very rare for a diver to see them. When we see it end up in a trawler, it's actually quite sad for us to, yeah. Activities like blast fishing or dynamite fishing are used to gather fish stocks rapidly. This endangers marine species like sharks and rays, and it damages coral reefs, which are crucial to the survival of marine life. And it's an ongoing issue that the locals see far too often. Macam lebih kurang jet itu kan sampai sini. Bayangkan sialah kuatnya macam mana. Semua mati. Ikan pun kita tengok pun sengsara. Ada punya badan semua ikan semua. Rumah-rumah ikan pun hancur. Through years of monitoring, Mantanani Island remains one of the hotspots for fish bombing. A blast detector in 2014 recorded over 2,000 cases of fish bombing happening in the area. And the biodiversity loss has been evident. One fish bomb uh, has a diameter of about 5 meters. So um, when the fish bombers, they throw the bomb at the coral reef areas, it will destroy uh, the reef that is uh, on the seabed. They don't actually just catch the fish, it actually destroys the reef at the same time as well. Explosive devices such as this damages our coral reefs, which in the long run could wipe out our marine life and ultimately leave many of us without food and jobs. In short, no reefs, no fish. In the 1950s, when there were when we could catch 25 tons of fish um, across 1,000 kilometers, now we can really only catch 7 tons. The reason why the rate at which we are catching the fish have declined is because there just isn't enough fish out there anymore. Malaysia every year loses up to 6 billion ringgit to illegal fishing. This means that approximately 900,000 tons of Malaysia's seafood, between 3 to 6 billion, is lost every year. That's a lot of fish. Yet for many fishermen, the pressure to reel in tons of fish daily has become somewhat a fight for survival. 
Now the South China Sea is huge. Usually, each country has sovereignty over areas of the sea, but not all is fair in the waters. Fishing disputes have stoked tensions between littoral states in the region. It has also posed a serious challenge to maritime security in the South China Sea. Lately, there have been more commercial fishing fleets from countries such as the Philippines, Vietnam and China in the South China Sea, scarring for seafood. This also means that our fishermen may have to be out at sea longer than usual to meet our increasing demands for seafood, knowing that there's less fish out there. Nah, susah sekarang lah kita cari ikan begitu daripada dulu kan. Hasil tangkap memang kurang lagi. Iya, memang itu sangat memberi kesan kepada pendapatan yang lain tempatan sini. Karena uh, hasil itu semakin berkurangan. Dia kapal juga, kan selalu panggil nama dia Bekong, Mbak. Semua dia orang ambil. Penyu, dia orang ambil. Ah, dia semua ambil. Yeah, semua orang. Semua orang sapu. Kita cari rezeki pun susah. So, what can we do? What we can do is that when we buy or purchase or eat seafood, we look for the certification. It's called the MSC certification. That assures us that the seafood has been sustainably fished and no damage to the environment has taken place. Whenever they visit the market, they can actually ask where the fish from and how they were caught. We can actually gather our voice to push more species to be protected in Malaysia as well. If we continue with the rate of our fishing practices, our greed will only lead to our own demise. As our populations grow and our fish stock declines, WWF reports that by 2050, millions of us would no longer be able to afford seafood, especially those living in coastal countries. About 11% of the world could face malnutrition, and when that happens, can only imagine the catastrophe on our generation. I think it's so important for us to learn about the sea because me as being Brunei and myself and you as Malaysians, we're all maritime Southeast Asians and before we all moved on land, the sea was our first home. So we need to protect it, you know, for our food security today and also really I think for the survival of our next generation. I think the ocean is important to us because this is um, our source of life. So if we're not doing anything about it, we'll just lose everything that's in it. The things that broke my heart is looking at reefs that's damaged directly by fish bombing or by anchoring because coral reef or corals, they take a long time to grow. Like the growth rate is very slow. Like some is, is like one centimeter in one year. They throw a bomb and then the reef that took 10, 15 years, some, some of them even older than us, destroyed in like five seconds. Like it's very, very sad to see all that effort gone wasted. So with everything you do, know that your behavior affects your environment. And so the death of the sea will also be the death of us.